This is code.org, and we got to investigate and modify. All right, let's see. Run the program, and ooh, okay, big orange run button, click. What's it do? What's, ooh, it breaks. That's not what, they lied to us. All right, let's see what's going on here. Then make the following changes. Ah, they buried the lead. Run the program after each change to observe the results. All right. What error did you, when you ran the program, what do you think caused the error? Oh, well, hi, person on the other end of the computer. Uh, so we're partners now. Uh, let's see. The error we're getting, error. Reach end a file while parsing. Okay. And what might have caused it? Well, for me at least, it says right here this curly bracket thing. Now, I know in in the council, in it, which is what this thing is, in Java, it says my neighborhood.java colon 18. That it's actually trying to give us the line number that could the, be the error. And notice on line 18, we have a curly bracket. Huh. So I wonder if it's in the wrong spot or there's too many, too few. Let's see. I It has to do with that for sure, though. All right, let's see. On line 17, add a curly... Oh, they call it brace. This is a controversy. It could be brace. Both are correct. All right, curly brace. Does that fix there? On line 17, I'm going to click on 17. It's the key up next to the letter P. It's actually two over. You want to hold shift, and we got a curly bracket or a curly brace. Add, uh, did it fix? I don't know. Let's move on. <gasps> Ooh, we got a moving painter. So, yes, that fixed it. All right, add the following code where indicated in the program. When, when run the pro, then run the program. What happens? Why do you think it happens? All right, when they say when indicated, guys, if you take a look at line 15, line 15 has a comment. A comment's just for us humans to read. Computers just skip them. So it's a handy way to take notes and programming files and things like that. When the computer runs this code, it's like that doesn't exist to it. Okay, so they want us to add my. Notice how they spell painter with a capital P, right? So lowercase my, the letter P and painter's capitalized, but no space or anything. And then lowercase the rest. So my painter dot move. All right, let me hit run. This is going to break. Blum, blum. Now it's yelling at us that it says there's no semicolon. Error, semicolon expected. So if we add this, I just want to be clear here, guys. It's trying to figure out what's wrong, and it knows there should be a semicolon. It's still going to break because semicolon isn't all there should be. Computers try to help, but in the end, they're dumb, and we have to tell them exactly what we want. All right, so let's see here. Change the line you added to my painter dot move. All right, so let me get rid of this semicolon. And when I say dot, they added parentheses, notice. So let me throw those on here and let's hit run. We couldn't compile your program. Look for bugs in your program and try again. Well, this time, maybe the error message is a bit more helpful. On line 16, let's end this line with a semicolon. And movement. Add a semicolon to the end of the line. Does this fix there? Why do you think it happened? Well, yep, it does fix there. Why did it happen? This is how programs know when a line is over or when a command is done is really what I should be saying. When our next thought is going to occur. So it's kind of like a period in a sentence, although periods mean something completely different in programming. But that's how you can think of it. At the end of a command, end of a line, you usually are going to want this. Now, these curly brackets, I want to point out, guys, if I click on line 17, it also highlights, next to the curly bracket, it also highlights the curly bracket on line 4. And that's because these are matching. For every curly bracket you have, you need a beginning and a closing, a start and an end. So now if I click down here on line 18, notice that line 3 curly brace, or curly bracket, also is highlighted. Every bracket needs a beginning and an ending bracket. It's a way to tell the computer what belongs in that section of a program and for the computer to know how and when to run it. It's pretty cool because if I go up to line three, for instance, where the first curly brace is and hit the little carroty thing next to the line number, line number three, bloop, everything disappears. <gasps> you just deleted all of your code. I didn't. This is actually something really common in IDs and different programming applications because it knows this is one chunk of code. So there's a way to quickly hide it if you want to focus on other lines.
To show you what I mean, I'm going to click it again and now go down to line four and click this little carroty thing next to uh, the number four. Click. And notice now all of that stuff is tucked away, but we can still see the code around it. That's a really quick way to check if you have starting and ending curly brackets because that's that how the computer knows how to separate and organize code. That all being said, we have a moving painter. We're awesome. Onward.